The food industry makes it easy for governments to ignore that salty elephant in the room, sodium. So we've put together seven sodium myths that perpetuate the problem and break them down piece by piece. Here's the inconvenient truth. Myth number one, Canadians consume a normal amount of sodium. The average range of dietary sodium consumption in industrialized, westernized countries like Canada is between 2,800 and 5,000 milligrams per day. This is not exactly a biological norm. During several million years of evolution, humans have lived with very little salt in their diets. For example, aboriginals living a traditional lifestyle in the Amazon jungle eat just a few hundred milligrams of sodium per day. The result? Their blood pressure does not rise with age and they rarely have strokes. Meanwhile, in Canada, the average sodium consumption is 3,800 milligrams per day. And the result? 90% of people will develop high blood pressure if they live a normal lifespan. Myth number two, high sodium foods taste salty. Many foods that are high in sodium, such as bread and canned vegetables, do not taste salty. Often foods that people think of as high in sodium, such as cheese, occasionally come in low sodium varieties. The only way to know for sure is to read the nutrition facts table. You may be surprised. Myth number three, if I consume less sodium than usual, my blood pressure will go up. There is no evidence for this. When you cut back on salt, your body activates hormones that regulate blood flow. This biological response is called the renin-angiotensin system. It is a normal response for your body and has a similar effect to medications people take to lower blood pressure, specifically diuretics. In the kidneys, sodium and water are absorbed and secreted as a pair. Diuretics work by flushing out sodium and water. Eating less sodium is another way of achieving the same effect. Researchers have demonstrated the clear benefits of diuretics for people living with hypertension or high blood pressure. And this brings us to our next myth, myth number four. Cutting down on sodium does more harm than good. This claim is based on either flawed or unreliable evidence, some of which has been retracted from medical literature. The truth? Cutting back sodium intake even just slightly does a lot of good for a lot of people. It's one of the most cost-effective ways to improve health and to prevent hypertension. Myth number five, by weight, sea salt contains less sodium than table salt. Tomato, tomato. Table salt comes from salt mines and sea salt comes from salt water. At the end of the day, it's salt and each contains about the same amount of sodium. Myth number six, I have complete control over how much sodium I consume. Excessive sodium intake is not a matter of personal choice. Less than one quarter of the sodium in our diets is either naturally occurring or added from a salt shaker. More than three quarters of the sodium we consume in Canada comes from processed or restaurant foods. The average Canadian consumes 3,800 milligrams of sodium per day. That's far more than the 2,300 milligram limit Health Canada suggests. And finally, our last myth, myth number seven. Governments cannot change how much sodium people consume. Sodium cuts in the United Kingdom and Finland have accompanied significant reductions in blood pressure and strokes, saving those governments piles of money. These salt reductions were achieved largely by governments cracking down on the amount of sodium in processed and restaurant foods. As a citizen, the most important thing you can do is help spread the truth. The more myths we bust, the more able governments will be to implement a sodium reduction strategy. Share this video on your social networks and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for watching.